Hello, everyone. Welcome to Introduction to Deep Learning. My name is Hao Xuan, and you are watching Recitation 0D, Google Colab 101. For other recitation materials, you can go to deeplearning.cs.cmu.edu for more details. In this video, I want to walk you through Colab, a powerful tool that you may want to use for your assignments, especially for part twos. In previous recitations, we've talked about AWS or the Amazon Web Service and how to redeem its credits, how to set it up and everything else. But there will be times in the course where you may run out of credits. You may want to have more GPUs or simply have trouble connecting to your EC2's instances. Even though we are offering you 150 credits for Amazon Web Service and it's way more than sufficient for this course, in previous semesters, we did witness some huge bills from AWS. Hence, we are giving you an alternative as it's always good to have a backup. And this is Google Colab. In addition to this video, we've also prepared you a tutorial documentation, which you are seeing right now, and the Colab notebook, which you can access through this link here. You are expected to work on a very, very interesting toy example where you can practice what you have learned so far. I highly recommend you to pass it before the semester begins. You can find the links in the description sections below. So what is Google Colab? Google Colab is a notebook that allows users to write and execute Python code through browsers. You may consider it as an online version of Jupyter Notebook running in a virtual machine. It's perfectly fine if you don't know much about Jupyter Notebook or the virtual machine. All you need to know is that the Colab has already taken care of all the work behind the scene, from setting up Python environment to installing the common packages. That being said, you can directly write code and execute it on Colab. Plus, this service is almost free. The major reason why we use Colab as an IDL student is that it currently offers free GPUs to us. In the common assignments, GPUs will be your friend if you train your model on CPUs, you may need to wait forever. By default, Colab allocates CPU instances for you, but to request GPU, you need to do something under its restrictions. Here, let me give you an example. To go to the Google Colab, we just type colab.research.google.com, or you can simply Google it. And in the welcome page, you can see there's a detailed uh, tutorial given by the official developers and you can choose all the existing notebooks or even have a new one. For now, let me stick with the one that we've already provided to you. Once you get into the notebook, you are not currently connected to any instance, but it will be automatically connected. And by default, what you are given is a CPU instance. To have a GPU instance, we need to go to edit, select notebook settings, and in the hardware accelerator, we choose GPU and click to save. Now, if we reconnect, we will get a GPU instance. Once connected, you can see the RAM and disk information here. You may notice that the disk is always half occupied. It is totally normal and fine. But for the RAM, you can see you only have a 12.72 gigabytes. It may not be sufficient, so you need to like carefully design your code and uh, by the way, how you move around and how you deal with your data. On your left side, you can see the table of contents. This hierarchy is the text hierarchy this notebook is currently have because I'm using the markdown. You can see I separate them into different sections. And uh, the gray one are the code blocks where you can write code directly, like here, I just simply import numpy as np and import random. I didn't pip install because the Colab has already done those for us. We can run a certain cell or block by tapping the run button, or you can simply use the shift enter button. To check what GPU you have, you can use the command NVIDIA SMI. You can see that the Colab is offering us a Tesla T4 and you can check how much memory you are currently using from this block. It's always a good practice to check uh, your conditions of your GPUs from time to time. Since Colab is a virtual machine, 
Once disconnected, the instance will be cleared together with all your files stored in that virtual machine. It would be a disaster if you train a model for five hours and the internet suddenly becomes dead and all your models will be gone with the instance. Hence, I cannot emphasize more that you need to back up your model from time to time to a permanent storage. Google Drive is one of the most convenient and reliable places you have. Hence, the next topic I want to talk about is how to mount your Google Drive to Colab. To mount your Google Drive to your current instance is really, really easy. Just copy paste the following sentence here and execute it. What you need to do is just follow the instructions. It asks us to go to the URL. Well, let's get to that. You need to choose an account. Here, I want to recommend you to use the Andrew account because OCM has given us unlimited access to Google Drive. Allow it and copy paste this super secret key. On success, you will see mounted at content slash G drive. If you want to make sure, you can go to the file tag and refresh. Now you can see there's a G drive folder and in the my drive, you can see everything I have in my Google drive. You can also navigate around using the CD command here. And to check that you can use the LS. Uh, this is a small tip that you can run almost all the bash commands by prefixing with this. Now let's check where we are and what we have. So those are quite identical to the file tag. Another tip is that you can always, you should always check where you are by using the pwd command. Now, currently we're in the content G drive, my drive. In the following assignments, you are strongly recommended to save your models to your Google Drive instead of the instance itself. And this is because as I said, all your saved files will be cleared together with the virtual machine once you are disconnected. If you feel skeptical about it, let's have a try. But first let's get back to the content folder. Now, say we are having a very important result, which is the result after five hours of training, you get 11785 and you want to save it to some places. The first place you choose is, is your instance. Now, if you refresh, you can see that our super hard to get result is already in the instance itself. But what if we terminate the session? and reconnect. You can see everything is gone and so is our super hard to get result. This is because every time we disconnect, your old instance will be cleared by Colab. And when you connect, you're actually connecting to a new instance that the Colab allocates for you. So this is quite bad to have your models and your intermediate results stored in the instance. So the best practice is to store them in your Google Drive as this is the permanent storage you have. Since we are uh, disconnected, we need to reconnect the Google Drive. Now you should know what to do. Just simply follow the instructions, choose the account, allow it. Copy paste the super secret key and boom, we are officially connected to our Google Drive. And this is a delay in the file tag, so you need to refresh it. Now we have our drive. And here you can see that I have, I've already CD to my drive. Let's save the super secret file here. Now you may see that we have a first arrow. What is it? It says uh, name NPS not defined. Now can you understand why? Yes, this is because every time we have a new instance, all the previous uh, things are already gone. So we need to re-import all the packages we have. 
now let's get back save again and you can see in my drive we have the let me go to the top now you can see we have the super hard to get result here and you can also see this file in your google drive app due to time limits i won't disconnect and reconnect to assure you but you can definitely have a try okay so let's get back to content. Next, I'd like to share with you about Kaggle. Kaggle is the platform we use to hold assignments, release the data set and gather your submissions. If you haven't done so, please go and sign up account here. We recommend you to use your Andrew account for the sign up. Once you are signed up, you can see everything we have here. Let me close those. There's a detailed uh, like step to step instruction about how to connect to Kaggle and how to create a new API here in the documentations. Once you've signed up, please fill out this form so that we can gather your Kaggle username and connect it with your Android ID because most of the scoring will be automated. Please be very cautious that you don't make any typos or you may suffer from like a delaying of your score or even a loss of your score. This is very important. So do remember to fill out this form in time. So once you are, once you have a account, you can choose the competitions you have. We are giving you the links to all the competitions we hold in the assignments write-ups. And for you, you need to like join the competition since I've already joined it. I don't need to do so, but remember to join the competition and the button is like here. In the Kaggle, you can see the question overview and the data set we've given to you and notebooks and the leaderboard where you can see how your classmates are doing, et cetera. You can download the data set directly from here but here I want to introduce you a much more convenient way, which is using the Kaggle API. To do that, we first need to install the Kaggle using the pip. Since I've already done that before, it says requirement already satisfied, but you should do that. And you need to have a token. What is token? Token is a way for the, for the collab and the Kaggle to know like you are you and everything you send through the API will be like tagged with your username. To get the token, you need to get back to Kaggle. Here, go to account. And you will see here, you should click create a new API token. On success, it will download a JSON file for you, which is a dictionary. You can have the like username and key pair. Just copy paste it here and run this block. Next, you also need to set the correct token permissions. To do that, you need to type the following things. A fair warning is that uh, in some cases, like executing this command once will bring you an error. So typical workaround is to <laughs> execute it twice. But if you still fail, you should also try to use this instruction to set the environment yourself. So to download data from Kaggle is very simple. You can either go to the website and click the download here. Oops, sorry. Click download all here, but I highly recommend you not to do that because in the real assignments, the data set will be like very, very large, like 10 gigabytes or so. So my recommendation is to use the API to do that. In the website, you can find the following commands like Kaggle competitions download hyphen C, and this is the competition name. 
and a quick trick is this already here. So all you need to do is copy paste it and execute it here. Oops. And all the data will be automatically downloaded to your current instance. Oh, uh, here I want to mention that even though we highly recommend you to store your models in your Google Drive, you are not recommended to store all the data sets to the Google Drive. Instead, you should put them in the instance because it's really fast to download uh, from Kaggle to the Colab instance. If you put everything in the Google Drive, you need to fetch it from Drive to the instance and do the unzip, which is quite time consuming. So after getting all the data, you can build your models, like do whatever you want. Speaking of models, even though you don't need this skill set for this recitation, you will definitely need it after the semester begins. More details will be given as we progress, but here I still want to mention a little bit about it. An important part of the models you are building is that you save them from time to time and then reload them later to improvise. A simple way to do this is to save them after some epochs. Again, you will definitely cry if Colab crashes abruptly after three hours of training. And trust me, it happens a lot. All your progress will be gone if you don't back up, so save your model from time to time. PyTorch has made it really easy for us to save and load the model. I've written down the code in the PDF, but what you need to understand here is that what you are saving. You may only save the model if you want for inference, but you need to save the entire state if you want to run it further. You might want to refer to the documentation for more understanding as we progress. Here, like I'm saying the torch save, you can see that I'm currently saving everything. But if you just want to do the inference, you, all you need to do is save the model state. And to load that is quite simple. You can just type torch.load and load all the information to your current models, optimizers, schedules, etc. Now, say you have finished your model and you have a very promising result. You want to hand in, you want to do a submission. What do you, what do you need to do? Well, all our file final results should be in CSV format. You can either download the CSV file and submit manually in the Kaggle website. Here, submit predictions. Or you can use the Kaggle API as well. For me, I'm a fan of using the Kaggle API because it's really, really fast and convenient. To do that, you can see that in the submission page, there's another command. You just copy paste it. And don't forget the prefix. And this is quite easy to understand. It's Kaggle Competition Submit. This is the competition name or the assignment name in the IDL context. Uh, F is the submission.csv. This name is subject to change based on what you name your CSV file. And this is a required commit message. You can see this is my first prediction. My recommendation is to show like some important uh, features you are having like uh, added uh, scheduler, things like that. And after executing it, you can directly check your score on leaderboard. Like my submission, it lists all the submission files you have. And in the leaderboard, you can see how you are uh, the like where you whether you are the first on top and who is your like whether you are behind others things like that so in the toy example that you will be doing it will be a very deterministic problem so you should have a full mark which is 1.0000 for the coming example Now, this is pretty much about the collab where you can start working on it right now. And there's a lot of other pro features, including using the tensor board and some data visualizations that you can explore as we progress. But here I want to highlight some limitations and tips for Google Colab users. 
First, let's talk about limitations. Colab is savior indeed, but it comes with a price. First, you can only run two notebooks concurrently per Google ID. And there's a limitation per Google ID in the GPU usage per 24 hours. Hence, a good habit is to switch to CPU sessions if you are not using GPU. Say you are writing codes or you are debugging like that. You can also use your own Google ID if you reach your usage limits. Colab off overreacts, I should say. It has its own logic to detect whether you are using it. Hence, my advice to you is to stay in one place during training for a stable internet connection. If you plan on leaving your model running unattended, you should be aware that Colab may disconnect. A workaround to this is write a script to connect, click the interface from time to time for you. There are a lot of ways to do that, and this is only one way of mimicking you clicking the Colab toolbar button. To do that, you can go to the if you are using Safari, you can use the develop and go to the show web inspector and in the console. Let me go up, just run it. You should be fine with it, but if it doesn't work, you can always Google to check other like scripts to help you avoid like automatically being connected by Colab. Let me get back to the button. And again, all your files will disappear as soon as you leave Google Colab. So save them well. And here are a lot of pro tips. Uh, I only list two. The first is the keyboard shortcuts. You'll be quite a pro as we progress. Like say, even after the homework one, you should be tired of like using the mouse to click things around. And a good way is to use the keyboard shortcuts. And you can also upload, download files using the following commands. It is quite easy. Now you know that there's a lot of limitations for the free users. I'd like to tell a little bit about the Google Colab Pro. Google Colab Pro provides priority access to faster GPUs, longer running notebooks, and fewer idle timeouts, and more memory. However, the restrictions are subject to change by Google, so you should always check the official website for more information. You can go there here. A little tip is that you need to pay $10 per month. It's worth it if you lack of time and we will have like way better GPUs and you have a longer time for the notebook to run. But the availability is only in the United States and Canada. If you're outside those two countries, you should use your VPN. And finally, I've list of like frequently asked questions. It will like keep updating. So you should come from time to time to check. Now I'd like to share with you about the toy example. It's very fun and you don't need to be too afraid of, of it because it's quite simple and everything you need are, are covered by your prerequisite courses. There's no deep learning concepts in it. Like the reason why we designed this toy example is to help you get familiar with Colab and with Kaggle. How you should download data from Kaggle and how you should do things and how you should upload your result to this. You can read off the problem description. It's actually quite fun. It's a, a, a way of like calculating the probability of one person loving you given that he or she smiles at you. And this is almost like the uh, real assignments will give you some skeleton so that you can work on. But as we progress, uh, the skeleton code or the starter code will be like uh, less and less. So you should like depend on yourself as you progress and become a pro deep learner. You can search for all the to-dos. Those are where you need to do, like implement the posterior probability calculation function and change the if statements, things like that. And here you can see how to connect to Kaggle. We've list some hints for you and we've already covered that. If you forget it, you should always turn to the a tutorial or the notebook for details. A kindly reminder is that uh, please fill out this form once you sign up for your Kaggle account. Da, 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 da. So the first part is like a single example. You only need to deal with one data. But here, dual magic is where the real things begin because we are giving you 100,000 data points for you to deal with. 
uh, you don't need to worry too much about it. It's just uh, plus, minus, multiply, divide. There's no, no DL related. And after that, you need to find a way to format your results in CSV format. Here, I recommend you to use Pandas. It's quite simple and consider it as a gift I give to you. And eventually you should use the Kaggle API to submit your results. So this is pretty much for the Colab tutorial. I hope you have learned how to mount your Google Drive, how to set up Kaggle, how to implement your design, and how to save your design to permanent storage, aka the Google Drive, and why you should download the data into your instance instead of the Google Drive, and eventually how to submit your predictions results to Kaggle. If you still have questions, please post them on Piazza because we're always happy to help you out. And thank you for your time watching this recitation. Have a good day and have a good semester and happy deep learning. Thank you.